So I want to welcome everyone to tonight's Loving Waters full moon Zoom attunement and connection call, a call where many of us uh, around the globe are getting together locally to do uh, water blessings, to stand for Standing Rock, to be a part of this energy of healing and reconciliation. And tonight, we um, have a beautiful call. And we welcome everyone on, on the Zoom and, um, and around the world. So tonight, we'll open our call with Maya Shaw Gale, who is a gorgeous, gorgeous shamanic water keeper in the Santa Barbara area. And she's going to open the call with uh, an attunement. And she's written the most gorgeous poem to really induct the feel tonight. And then we'll be opening up the call and Unity Grace, I believe, who's been at the Vatican doing water blessings, will be with us tonight. And, um, and tonight's closing will be a gift from Karina Sha'a beautiful, beautiful sound toning, sound healing. So we welcome everyone. And for those of you that are on the phone, my name is Shelly Darling, and I'm in Sarasota, California. And um, we just welcome you. So tonight, <clears throat> we'll start with Maya and this beautiful focus of the waters and inviting everyone to really feel into the waters of your your own body in connection to Mama Gaia's body in her waters. So with that, Maya. Oh, oh, I'm so grateful for Loving Waters and this collective of deep water lovers. And I felt yesterday in the ceremony we did so much, I was feeling this circle around the world, holding our circle, our small circle. So thank you. So honored to be part of this sisterhood, brotherhood of water lovers, water protectors. And I, um, lately I've been called, when I call the four directions and call the ancestors to come, then I've been calling the three levels of water that I have been connected to or have been calling to me. And so I will do that now. And I just invite you to, let your spirit ride along with the waters that I'm connecting with. And I call, first of all, to the celestial waters, the waters of the heavens, the waters that we've now come to know are everywhere in space, droplets of water, even in the sun. These celestial waters reminding us of our own divine consciousness that pervades the universe, that we are connected with everything, that we are a part of not just on Gaia, but a part of all galaxies and nebula and the vast, vast universe. And also the celestial waters that are closer to us that come from the cloud people, the rain and the mist and the snow. And I call to you, reminding us to receive and be grateful for the waters that rain down upon us. And even the water in the air, in the atmosphere, that we, when we breathe, we are breathing in the droplets of water. And when we exhale, we are breathing, we are gifting water back to the atmosphere. You know, the modern, you say we are water makers. And so we become aware of that water and like our divine, collective selves connected throughout the universe. And then our earth beings, our earth human selves here on the surface of Gaia. Water you on the surface, beautiful creeks and streams and rivers and lakes and the ocean, Grandma Ocean herself teaching us how to move on this earth, how to move with grace and flow, not struggling uphill, 
but to surrender to gravity and to flow with ease and to join each other as we move along our paths. You teach us how to be in connection. And you remind us that with the smallest, smallest beginning, a droplet of water, a small amount of water coming from a spring, as we join together, we can become mighty, like the mighty rivers, like the rapids and the waterfalls. Thank you. Thank you, waters of the earth and the surface. And then I honor the primordial waters, the deep underground water that lives in the dark places, in the shadows, the caverns and cenotes, the waters that come from the springs that are the keepers of the original codes, the pure crystalline structure, that sacred geometry of the six-pointed star with the seven point in the center reminding us of our own original innocence that we still hold deep in our unconscious, deep in the place of dreaming, this deep source of pure water and creativity. We call to you and invite you to help us remember the deep, deep truth of who we are. And feeling as we breathe that connection, that column of light that we breathe and feel drawing up the energies, the purity of the primordial waters, feeling the flow and the nourishment of the waters on, on the earth's surface. And feeling that connection to the cosmos, to our divine nature, to the water that we breathe, and that we feel above us. And I call us all to be conduits of that beautiful water. We already are, all of us are conduits of the water, but to be conscious conduits. And remembering the water offers itself to us as a um, holder of energies and that we honor it by choosing the thoughts and the feelings, the, even the beautiful sounds like Karina just made, to gift it with very high vibration so that it can hold that high vibration. And if you have any of your sacred water containers near you or a glass of water, I just invite you to hold it now. I like to hold my water to my heart. I have my water collected from beautiful sacred places around the world. And I hold to my heart and silently offer the qualities, the prayers, the intentions, the vision that I want this water to carry out into the world for me. And sometimes when I'm offering my prayer to the water, it speaks back to me. And it just said to me, humility. <laughs> Remembering it, water itself is humble. It surrenders. It knows how to surrender.
And after I bless my water, I like to take a little drink and bring it inside with the blessings. So in this time, especially this week, after the elections and so much chaos going on in the world, I called to the water and it just reminded me of those little droplets that when they come together can have such power when we join together in unity, reconciling our differences and deciding to flow together. And also the water knows so much how not to be intimidated by those obstacles. The water flows around obstacles. It doesn't push, it flows around, but it's also changing the shape of what it flows around. It trusts that by flowing and including that obstacle in a way as part of its flow, that is also changing it. It gently wears and changes the shape of what it comes into contact with. So I ask for that, that, um, that gentleness, that uh, compassion and Mm, peacefulness as we stand together and all that we're going to have to stand for now. So thank you, thank you, Waters. Thank you. I'm so sorry for the ways we mistreated you. I love you. Please forgive us, forgive me, forgive us all. Thank you, thank you for the blessing of life that you bring us. And since the waters have been talking to me a lot lately, I believe it was the waters that woke me up in the middle of the night in September and were flowing words into my heart faster than I could barely write. I got up and turned the light on and this, these words of encouragement to the water protectors at Standing Rock came. And uh, I would like to share them now. And little did I realize in that moment, that what I was writing as encouragement for the water protectors of Dakota, of the Lakota people, <laughs> is that we are all going to need this encouragement now as we stand together in many, many places around our country. And it's called Stand Together. Stand like a rock and do not move. Stand for the earth and her precious waters. For the others don't know that everything is connected and what affects one will soon affect all. Stand like a rock and do not move. Stand for your ancestors whose graves were destroyed. They have given their lives and their livelihoods their land. Now must they give their dignity too? Stand like a rock and do not move. Though they bring in their dogs and their mace and their machines of destruction, stand proud in peace and show the world what warriors of the spirit can do without force. Stand like a rock and do not move. Stand in the heat, in the rain and the winds, and if necessary, the snows. The elementals, have come to back you up and to sing their songs of protest and protection too. Stand like a rock and do not move. Your medicine is rising once again through these lands. May your bodies be like prayer arrows planted in the earth, proclaiming the sacredness of all life in all forms. Stand like a rock and do not move and no, you will not be standing alone. Your brothers and sisters all over the globe are gathering in circles to send prayers and blankets and standing with you in the solidarity of love. Stand like a rock and do not move. There's power in numbers and the numbers will grow. The ancestors are returning and they are wearing many colors of skin. Let this cause be a signal for the rainbow tribes to unite. We are all the ones we've been waiting for. Stand together like rocks and do not move.
Oh, wow. Let's just take a moment and take a breath and really allow that to move in the waters of our soul. That was just exquisite. Thank you, Maya, for this beautiful opening. Oh, mm. and for those of you that are going to be watching this, um, I didn't have a chance to share a little bit about Loving Waters, and I, I'd like to do that before we open the call. And I believe Unity, is that you on with us? 604? That's me. Sorry, I just oh. had myself muted. I'm oh, no, here. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, good. So I just yeah. wanted to check to see if that was you. You can mute for a, moment, a few more minutes. And I um, just want to just tell people a little bit about Loving Waters because um, it's, it is, it's its own attractor field. And Loving Waters, here we're a growing community of water advocates that are calling for a global focus on the blessedness of water, that we're collectively giving our expression of gratitude for for water that is within us and around us. <clears throat> We're inviting people around the world to join with us on a, for full moon water blessings and a water attunement and support call, a place where you can meet other water keepers, water faithful. Um, this is that poem described. I just felt these tears and, and, we are water, and more and more we're recognizing that and we're being able to share that. So we're really encouraging people to come together to, um, to really stand, stand as a rock <laughs> at your watershed, that that's how you can be so beneficial and that our watersheds are all connected as one water. So we had this realization that once a year water blessing wasn't really enough. And so we're coming together monthly and um, we come together on Zoom or you can get on your phone, make it easy um, to really elevate this frequency and voice of the water. Um, tonight we're really graced by some of the water advocates that are here with us. And we're going to open the call, and um, Unity is going to share her gift into the circle. And just know that we are here once a month, and that you can also go to the Facebook page, Loving Waters. Um, we're posting at least twice a day, and really getting people a way to connect with each other, discover each other, discover who's today. I got a message from someone in Colorado asking please to connect him with people in his area. You know, we're all realizing that this is a time that um, we're com we, we need to come together as Maya was sharing. And um, I think that's, oh, one last thing before we open the call is um, we've put together this incredible brochure that uh, has not only an understanding of water blessings and Dr. Masoro Emoto and what he brought to our awareness about water um, and shifting the consciousness of water. Um, we, have a, we have a practice that anyone can use. And what I've seen is that this brochure can be used for um, your families, just even your, just your children or uh, friends or a group gatherings you can anyone can start a water blessing in their area but also um, it's an incredible educational tool that we can um, bring into the school systems you know and use teach in the classrooms it's incredible and then there's a beautiful water blessing song on that so you can um, go to loving waters and and ask share your email and we'll send one to you or the email is loving waters dot life at gmail.com and um, we'll send one to you there and stay tuned because the website is being worked on as well so we're almost there so with that um, I think we're just going to open the call and um, and then I'll invite unity to really share um, what I feel is a really beautiful global perspective on water and the and the connection of uh, grid lines and and what we can do as a collective. So um, excited to, to
to hear that too. So let's open the call as we usually do. And please feel free to unmute yourself. And tonight, just what's emerging for you around the water? Um, and that we as water keepers, as water advocates, as water faithful, we can also hold your tears because there might, there is a lot of grieving going on on the planet. So whatever that is, um, and also if you've done water blessing, please share into the field. We want people to know um, here, we want to know where you are and, and what is your watershed. So please uh, be willing to share that as well. And with that, I'm just going to um, pass this virtual uh, crystalline talking stick. And please feel free to take yourself off mute. And Unity, if you feel that, like it's time to jump in, we trust the flow. And we'd love to hear from you too. Well, I'll say thank you um, so much, Shelley, because you presenced me. Um, and, and I feel the flow. I'd love to hear the voices of some of the others on the call before jumping in and would just like to express my incredible gratitude to Maya for that incredible dedication to water. And it's so moving uh, to me to truly understand how many have been doing this for so long and understand. And we've been doing it quietly. We've been doing it on our own. We've been doing it all over the world. And our lives are making sense right now why we have been doing what we've been doing. And so I'm so moved by, by the poem and the prayer, the blessing. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear some other voices before jumping in myself. That feels like the flow. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Shelly, are you speaking to me or, uh, to, or to others? No, that's oh. actually Lori. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm Lori. Got it. Hi. So I'm really new to this, so I can't hear any of you when I'm speaking. Is that how that works? Because all of you are muted. So um, after our water blessing last night, um, I came home and just kind of sat in some meditation, and I have bought these oracle cards that I draw, it's called earth medicine. And um, I just kind of asked spirit, you know, what is it that he would have me know, or you know, they would have me know what, what am I, you know, kind of what, what did, what evolved from this water blessing. And I pulled this card that I've never pulled before. Can you see it? And it's rain and it's purification. And when I read about it, it says, no matter whether it's a light shower or a deluge, rain cleanses and purifies. The moisture that has evaporated from the various bodies of water on the planet and was drawn into the atmosphere now returns to the earth as a liquid precipitation in nature's vast and comprehensive water recycling program. Depending on where and when the rain falls, it can come as a welcome relief or a nuisance. Even the air smells fresh after a good rain. It also brings in clear water, which provides needed substance for plants, animals, and humans. At its most intense, rainstorms arrive as an avalanche of water, often accompanied by great and powerful winds with considerable flooding and destruction as an unfortunate consequence of nature's impersonal balancing act. What is purged makes way for the new life to appear. So forgive me because my eyes have changed and now I can't see very good all of a sudden. So uh, can you still hear me? Yes. So after that, it says, okay, so my, the rain is purification, and it says, purifying your mind, body, and spirit is the task that is put before you. Purify your mind by identifying a prominent belief you carry about yourself, 
that inhibits you from being fully engaged in life, from showing up 100% of the time. Purify your heart by allowing yourself to breathe in and out blessings and forgiveness so that you can love even more deeply. Let yourself feel grief, truly feel it, so that the rivers of your tears become miniature baptisms that help heal the wounds in your soul. And if necessary, detoxify your body, the temple and the seat of the soul. By balancing your diet, doing a cleanse for a few days, or simply drinking more water, increasingly the daily amount increasing the daily amount of water you drink with deep appreciations for its purpose with will revitalize your spirit it is no wonder that in some indigenous languages water is called lifeblood as it is essential to every life form on earth take time to purify yourself so i just thought that was nice uh, end for my evening after the water ceremony, and uh, was definitely appropriate. Lori, would you just share with us uh, where you're standing and what your watershed is? Is that part of the Sarasota watershed? I'm actually not even sure. Um, I believe what we're on uh, Peace River watershed. Uh <laughs> Perfect. which i we're the same aren't we i think that i mean the peace river is huge so i think it goes all the way up um it's pretty large so it encom encompasses mm. sarasota and beyond mm. so i'm actually in port charlotte and i live um Right by Port Charlotte Harbor, which is uh, kind of in an estuary, and I'm surrounded by water on all sides. Um, Bo Boca Grande, um, our neighborhood is a canal system, all water, and um, the Mayaka River and the Charlotte Harbor flow together. Mm. So that's where I am. Gorgeous. Um, thank you so much because I what we're going to be doing in the next two weeks is gathering, having people share their watersheds and begin to put them up on the website. So that's really beautiful. And um, thank you for that reading. And uh, I'd love that the peace river came in because today so much of the energy that in the connections in the field that I've been experiencing is about peace and the sense mm -hmm. of how the river moves, how that energy flows but simultaneously we can actually be inside of this frequency that's really peaceful and um, and our nervous systems can quiet down as we're in that momentum. I, I loved how uh, Maya was sharing about, you know, it, it can be, you know, a, a, a big strong current or it can be just a trickling river, but, but that essentially within this, the center of the, even you go all the way down to the electron that, that there's it's spinning, but there's a stillness. There's there's that sense of that epicenter, and um, so the sense of peace that we're holding, and maybe that's a, a theme also for tonight. You know that that we really hold that for um, everyone. That's the prayers. Um, yeah. I want to add. Um, I was working with Ken Benway, and what we started doing on Facebooks was we were breaking down some of the major watersheds in the world. And we started making a Facebook group for each watershed. So the Peace River, so it's Peace River Bioregion, or, um, well, it's Permaculture Guild, but um, um, I think we did it for the Mississippi, we did it for like the Jordan River. I mean, um, the major watersheds we were trying to put a Facebook um, page for so that everybody living in that watershed could connect on that page and discuss it and bring topics so that's happening um, oh. Ken's just, actually I'm going to see him this weekend so he kind of stepped back and was directing me um, and um, I think that that's gonna come mm. into play again I, it's not really utilized by a lot of people um, but I think the more that we put it out there and and this is a way 
uh, wherever you are in whatever watershed we can have that page so you can go directly there and communicate with each other beautiful well thank you so much for sharing and we're going to just keep opening the flow and i know we'll we'll connect around that because i can see how loving waters can be a support for what you're doing and what you're doing be a support for loving waters this beautiful exchange so thank you so much wonderful so let's just keep opening the call for well, there's just a few of us here, Unity, tonight, and um, Karina. Mm, thank you. Beautiful sharing so far. Just gorgeous. Um, yeah, I've had a really powerful weekend of a lot of crying and weeping. I even wrote about it on my Facebook page. Just a lot of releasing. I actually went to a birthday party yesterday where we did a letting go ceremony. Uh, I was up, in, I'm in Canada, uh, north of Toronto, and I went to a place called Caledon. It's called the Forks of the Credit, and uh, the Credit River runs down into Lake Ontario. I'm also near the Oak Ridges Moraine, which is all the underground streams that carry waters down into the Great Lakes and spreads out. Uh, I'm extremely blessed to be in uh, water everywhere. Where I live, I'm near the Rouge River, which again empties out into Lake Ontario, which lakes goes into the St. Lawrence and out into the ocean. So um, Canada is extremely blessed with a lot of fresh water. And so I'm, I found a, a very powerful um, meditation experience that each one of the Great Lakes carries a specific sacred geometry structure, and carries a specific frequency or tone of sound. So I did this many, many, many moons ago where I did a full on ceremony at the different Great Lakes, activating the um, sacred geometry structure that was carried by it, and then did the tone and the sound with groups. So we had some very powerful experiences with that. Um, and water carries specific uh, frequencies as we know and tones and for me um, someone who works with sacred geometry with art design and harmonics um, the key for my understanding of water blessing is um, the song that it carries at its heart and so I'm here to help in the restoration of the song lines that flow through all the waterways and the sound of water is in its many forms is both powerful and soothing. And um, I, as I have said before, I grew up over, <laughs> my house was over an artesian well. So we had to deal with water all the time in our house. So water for me was where I was birthed and where I remain with that. So um, for me, it's more than just life. Water is everything. And without it, there is um, a disconnection. And our whole planet and all its suffering that we experience in humanity it revolves around not a crisis in environment, but a crisis in consciousness. And when the consciousness is tuned to the, the frequency or the harmonic of the awareness of connection in all levels of being, we will discover the inherent breath of love that flows through water and that very heart of that water experience that all of you have talked about. So that's just one of my experiences of many experiences with water. Thank you so much. I honor and bless you. Karina. I, water certainly, the vibration of water flows through your voice. So... <laughs> And I was just reflecting so, so many things. I want to comment on the watershed uh, as a structure for us, a, a model for us in the future. But just uh, with voice, um, I had a hard time in, early in my life of feeling I could not sing. And I uh, was very shy about singing and felt like I couldn't carry it to me. My family was made fun of anybody who sang. So. It was good for me to get in circles. The chanting happened in, in a group. But um, 
after the water ceremony yesterday, I mean, I'm much, I take more courage to go ahead and let it come, but it was a beautiful ceremony. We did some blessing each other with the water, um, Lori, and uh, we did it more going around freely and finding someone to stand in front of and we incorporated the idea of uh, accepting each other's uniqueness and diversity with standing in front of each other saying, I see you getting centered first, breathing together and being in silence and then saying, I see you and I honor the unique gift that you are. Mm -hmm. And then bless them with the water on the third eye and the heart. And people just, I mean, there were people in this group who had never really done anything like this and had never come to a water ceremony before. And it was, it was so moving and people just, it just melted into each other. And so that was a wonderful experience. And afterwards I had a little break and then I was uh, called to go to another circle to honor Standing Rock. It was a very multicultural circle and it was mostly in Spanish. So I had to listen carefully. <laughs> but everyone was singing and they were offered songs from Colombia and Mexico and Venezuela and Native American songs. And, and I just found the courage to offer a song I love, a grandmother's song. And I was so surprised when I sang, the water came through me. Mm. And my voice did things it's never done before. And it just flowed. And I was like, thank you, water. Thank you. <laughs> you are teaching me your creation, <laughs> your frequencies. And that was just, uh, it was beautiful. Mm. But also I wanted to say, um, I know this man, Doug Tarchin, who was very, um, He's traveling the world, uh, opening people to the consciousness of watershed should be how we organize our societies. Like then all indigenous people did gather around a watershed and would be down water from each other. They would be so connected. They would really feel tangibly how they're impacted by each other's behaviors. You know, if you don't take care of the water above me, I inherit your polluted water. And anyhow, he was one of the ones who was, um, he started up in the Puget Sound and helped change the name of Puget Sound to Salish Sea, back to the native word. And he works with a lot of indigenous people. And this is the, the whole concept. If we came back instead of the unnatural lines of cities and states and the unnatural boundaries, if we came back to we're in a grouping around a watershed, that we would naturally go into the sustainable values of and um, honoring each other, honoring the earth, honoring the source of our life, the waters and the plants that grow in that area and the animals that get drawn to that watershed. So I, I that really uh, excited me. And I just try to visualize the map <laughs> of our world with all these communities really getting that the real community is around the watersheds. So I vision that for the future. <laughs> uh -huh. I know I have to presence Elizabeth because uh, I know she'd be just so blissed out to be here and um, I'm not sure what's going on and um, why she's not here, but I trust that if she could be, she would be. And just her voice about um, really the return of the sacred relationship to water, which is really what you're talking about. And that's really her, uh, divine design destiny um, as a part of loving waters and a part of water awake so I just wanted to presence her as you are speaking it's really beautiful and um, I think let's open it to unity and uh, flow keep flowing this river <laughs> well definitely um, flowing with you all and um, I am in California right now and have been walking the earth for six years pretty much nonstop doing water blessings and it's really an honor to sit in the presence of the wisdom of what I'm hearing here um, with each and every one of you dedicated to the spirit of water and the understanding that that dedication to the spirit of Water is the dedication to um, the rise of humanity's consciousness of 
humanity's ascension in totality. And uh, so I'm, I'm really, really honored. And Shelley, who has been holding this space um, for so long as well, who's such an amazing water weaver, et cetera. Um, I just, I thank you. And for me personally, um, like I say, right now, life is making sense in totality. You know, the last six years has been this uh, real period of walking away from pretty much everything that was uh, part of my life. Because I went for a swim in a, in a cave on Kauai in Christmas Eve 2010, and instantly the voice of water turned on within. And to have walked pretty much nonstop, living out of a suitcase, climbing over fences, going through no press trespassing signs, <laughs> going everywhere as guided, going like a right source, you take over because of course we all know working with water, the miracles flow to confirm that something greater is happening. And um, I, I just, I, I bow to each of you. And I understand that the voice of each of you actually represents the awakening of, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And thank goodness for Dr. Amoto showing us the power of one drop of water to transform. And um, what am I guided to share here? I just, I, I kind of feel speechless in the presence of what each person has said. It's really so simple. Um, you know, the mind has made things so complicated and water is so simple and it's the greatest teacher and I bow to water as being my greatest teacher. I'm continually amazed when we learn to, um, as uh, the one beautiful um, sister on this call read, um, the piece about stilling the waters of the body, etc. Um, you know, we really understand we are water temple and what it means to come back into alignment with the cosmos is to understand how to still the waters of our bodies because once we learn to still the emotional waters of the body we become naturally aligned with cosmic law cosmic flow natural law again why because the cymatics the sound of the cosmos, the harmonics of the cosmos can once again imprint themselves like ripples upon the waters of our bodies, our water temple. And we naturally become aligned with all that is, true sovereign beings. And in the state of, uh, you know, a society of people who are true sovereign beings, all laws fall away, all borders fall away, all boundaries fall away. Because the cosmos speaks through us in perfect alignment. And this is the embodiment of heaven and earth unified. And to understand, listening to each of you, how rapidly, you know, the acceleration process now for all of humanity, the tsunami wave, is clearly here for the awakening. And we've made it to the point that we've all worked so hard um, to get to. And it's happening and it's here and it's now. So I'm humbled. I'm grateful. I'm joyous. I'm celebrating. And I guess I'm guided to share this one piece. Of, uh, you know, in the last three months, I've been walking the grid lines in Europe on the spring uh, or on the fall equinox. I went to Grotto de la um, Grotto de la Sembalm, where Mary Magdalene did her water blessings, and um, the final piece for me in Europe, uh, the guidance, the water sent me to the Vatican on um, the, from the seventh to the ninth over Election Day, and once I got to the Vatican, the guidance um, showed that there was a final piece for the rising of humanity which was the clearing of the karma of the war crimes of the church against the indigenous people and using the water to um, do those clearings allows that victim perpetrator model to be transcended in our consciousness the victim perpetrator archetypes 
and by releasing the karma of the church, um, then, then the model was released. And it was quite amazing what happened to me in St. Peter's Basilica. I went in on the 7th and did several water blessings throughout the church and the square on um, the guidance. And, um, you know, in 2015, I broke my pelvis and the guidance came through and said, it was happening to break the seal, to release the codes of the Cosmic Mother to come through me. And on the 8th, on election day, the guidance had shown me that I would go into the Basilica in tone, and the Great Cosmic Mother would come through the toning as the final clearing. And um, I got to the Basilica, and they said that the dome, La Cupola, had closed early that day. And there was many monks and so on coming to go visit the, the dome and everyone was confused saying, why is it closed? And this energy of the cosmic mother arose in the waters of my body. And the guidance said, move over because the cosmic mother is about to cry through you. And for 45 minutes, I stood in front of the guards weeping uncontrollably feeling the extent of the great cosmic mother's love for all of her children through the waters of my body. And the guidance said, this was her clearing, her forgiveness, her purification standing inside of this structure on this grid line to clear this karmic energy, these karmic cymatics that are still rippling around in humanity's collective consciousness in our collective sea of unconscious and the guards were perplexed and i just cried i just let those waters take me over and and weep and then the guidance said it's done look down at your feet and the my feet and the floor were soaked from the waters and i was standing on an eight-pointed star and the guidance said to the eight-pointed star of the mother, the waters are, are cleansed. And I guess it's just, we all have these amazing stories of these experiences of how we can hear the greater wisdom when we learn this mastery of our own waters. And then we get to sit in the seat next to God and, and actually see the unfolding of this great awakening of, of humanity, of all of creation's children. And um, I went outside and did a, a, a blessing by the obelisk. The guidance said to be there at 7, 11 p.m. on the day of the election. And, um, and then Grandma Silverstar from the Star Knowledge family had sent me a note saying that major aurora frequencies were coming in that day and so um, the guidance told me exactly when the aurora frequencies had come into the water to collect the water and then to get on a plane using the 1111 gateway from the old world to the new world and so i flew on 1111 leaving europe arriving in uh, la on turtle island and went directly to a place called Full Circle Temple. Full Circle Temple is where I collected the last waters of, uh, of my waters that I began a journey around the globe with in 2014. And I collected those waters on um, Good Friday of 2014, just before the Grand Cardinal Cross. And I landed in Israel on the day of the Grand Cardinal Cross with the waters. And the astrologers all said that was the day that Christ was removed from the cross. And, um, and those waters came into my bottle on, on, on Easter Sunday. And so here, two years later, arriving and going directly back to Full Circle Temple with the waters, um, where we created an amazing medicine water wheel with Marshall Golden Eagle Jack in 2014. And the guidance was saying these waters are activating the turtle for the liberation of the dove through Turtle Island. And that night at 1111, I gave a good portion of those waters to a little baby named Aurora. 
who was born a year ago on 11-11 at exactly 11-11 a.m. And I guess the great thing is how the waters of, of this whole story is just how waters will always bring us full circle. And for all of this to happen at Full Circle Temple with this new child, um, you know, her, her, her astrological blueprint was uh, her Vedic blueprint shows that she holds no karma. And, and just this greater story, this divine orchestration through water is um, the piece we're sharing at this time. So uh, thank you for inviting me to the call and letting me share this piece with water, this greater evolutionary story for humanity through water. Ah, hmm, let's just hold that blessing in our hearts and um, wow. How just perfect, perfect the energy flows. <laughs> so grateful for all of you and all those that you're connected with and all those that are connected with those <laughs> and so forth. Um, and I just want to bring in the children. I, I Again, just like that was such a beautiful way to be, come into full circle with this call. I mean, it's just so immaculate, isn't it? You know, the full, full, full cycle of this call to end with the children and to hold that as we're uh, moving out. Um, but we do have a few more minutes and I just, not sure who just joined us, so we'll just welcome who just joined us on the phone, with the 269 number. We can hear you. Thank you. That's um, Marianne Johns. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Hi, Marianne. Welcome. Um, well, we've just been having this incredible call, and you'll be able to hear it on replay, but we'd love to hear just um, your calling to come on this call and where you are and what watershed and what's moving through you. Uh, I'm sorry that you haven't, you've been here with us. <laughs> That's all we can say. And I'm Shelly Darling and I'm in Sarasota and holding space for this call with Maya Shaw Gale and Karina Shaa, Larry Point Wynn and Unity Grace um, and Elizabeth Rogers, who's not with us tonight and Julie Armstrong, who are some of the um, uh, stewards of this loving waters so if you'd like to share a few minutes with us we'd love to hear okay um thank you i uh actually just came out of a meditation and saw an invitation to join this call and so i did i didn't actually look at the time or <laughs> what started when i just picked up the phone and called so um okay. i've been learning a lot from unity about the importance of, of blessing water and the work and some of it's new to me and and sometimes I feel like I've known it forever but forgot I guess it's fair to say so um, I have a lot of learning to do and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have connection with such just incredible incredible beings to to help guide me through, through this mm. Gorgeous. And, and just say your name again. Marianne. Marianne. Okay. Um, so Marianne, it's perfect because we're sort of coming to a, a full cycle of this call. And um, I just, for people that may be watching this, um, that we'll, we'll, we'll send out the replay the recording and that you can please know that you're a part of us and um, loving waters, the way it emerged was so gorgeous. And it's really an energy of love that, and the water that everybody can hold. And so we invite you to come um, play with us and, and learn from us. From, we learn from each other. Um, that's just what the, the gift of this is at Loving Waters on, on the Facebook. Um, and then also, too, if you go to Loving Waters, there, there's a little icon that says send email. And that if you send the email just with your email and who you are, we'll send you this beautiful Loving Waters brochure that you can use to participate in with your family or school or uh, community. Um, we're really excited about oh, it. Oh, great. Yeah, because it's, it's really a brochure that anybody can feel comfortable with and, and really 
begin their cycle with flowing with their waters. So um, with that, we're going, you, please stay on because Karina Shah, who's in Canada, is going to close this call with an incredible toning. We've been talking about sound and water and being at the Vatican and doing blessings and doing blessings all over. So um, we're really excited. And please join us for our next full moon um, attunement call. And just so everybody knows, we know that it's been a little bit confusing because we've, we've had uh, the full moon water blessings be on the Sunday closest to the full moon. And then we've always done that, these attunement, these loving water uh, Zoom calls on the full moon itself, but we're changing all that. We've come to realize it's too confusing for people. We want to make it simple for you. So from now on, um, the water gatherings and the full moon uh, support and connection call will be on the same day on the full moon. So that makes it pretty simple. And um, thank you so much for being here and holding space for uh, the waters and standing rock and this beautiful reconciliation and healing of um, and restoration of our planet and her waters, so her one water. So with that, I hand this beautiful crystalline talking stick to you, Karina, and you can close our call. Thank you. I just want to mention to Unity Grace that the eight-pointed star is the symbol of Venus, which is the symbol of uh, the Divine Mother, the, the loving presence. So the waters pouring out of you on the eighth pointed star, which actually creates a specific pattern of the eight pointed star when Venus travels around these patterns. And I just thank and honor each and every one of you. Ah. <clears throat> if we feel called to take in a nice deep breath and release with the sound of awe, which is the sound of the heart. Um, feeling our collective flowing sweetness of water. What is of all things most yielding? Thank you, Lao Tzu, and the secret energy of water and how it flows. Divine Mother and Great Grandmother who flows through to me now.
So be it, and so it is. Speechless in Sarasota. <clears throat> Thank you. Love you all. Thank you for showing up. And continue to presence ourselves together in communion. Please come on our Loving Waters page. Post any any inspiration, any song, any video that you feel others would love to see. This is a growing community of uh, Water Faithful. And as in Maya's poem, standing, a standing rock, a standing rocks for standing earth, standing for earth. And we love you all. And thank you, Loving Waters. Thanks you. And this, the source water. Really, you can feel it tonight. It's just so grateful for us coming together. So blessings, 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 and we'll see you soon. Aho. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So much love. Woo, thank, so you. Much love. thank you. Thank you.